All right, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm kind of uh, learning as I go here, but uh, I just thought from the beginning it would be good to talk about these different kinds of functions that we're going to see, uh, and we see um, parametric. We just did parametric, and uh, we'll get into uh, a little more of that later, but uh, now we're going to go on to polar coordinates and the uh, derivative of a polar uh, function. So I'm just going to quickly review what a polar function is, how it works, uh, how you input things, how you get the output, um, all that kind of stuff. So let's use this example of r equals cosine theta. And uh, just to remind you, in a typical uh, xy <coughs> function, y will be equal to some function of x, right? And uh, we'll put in x and we'll get out y. And we'll x and y, and there's our point right there, right? So instead of that, in polar coordinates, it's not x and y, it's theta and r. So you give the function a theta, an angle, and it tells you the radius, r, just the straight distance from the origin to the point. Okay. So um, let's try this one. Uh, we'll start at 0. right? We'll start at 0. Cosine of 0 is, let's see, 1. The cosine of 0 is 1. So here we look at a polar uh, graph system. We look at the angle zero. We start there, and we graph a uh, a um, a radius of one. Let's um, let's actually go. Let's use this as uh, our one, just so that we have uh, you know we can kind of use this scale here. That's a little easier to see. Okay. Um, now let's go to uh, pi over six. Right. We'll just hit the easy ones. Pi over six. Uh, will give us a cosine of root 3 over 2. Okay, square root of 3 over 2, what is that going to be? That's going to be, um, is that going to be, uh, well, we need, we need kind of an estimate, right? So let me just grab this quite real quick. Uh, square root of 3 divided by 2, how big is that? That's about 0.87. So we come over here, we go to an angle of pi over 6, 0.87, that's, uh, this is 1, right? So this is going to be like 3, 4, so it's going to be 0 0.75. 0 0.87, that's not a bad guess right there. All right, let's go to uh, pi over 4. What is the cosine of pi over 4? It's root 2 over 2. So we will go here, and we'll just replace this 3 with a 2. Let's see, 0 0.707, 0 0.71. Okay, 0.71, remember we're going to a, an angle of pi over 4. We put pi over 4, in, pi over four into here and got the square root of 2 over 2, which is about 0.71. So that's going to be just shy of 0.75. Okay, what's the cosine of pi over 3? That's exactly 1 half. Okay. And then the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. All right, here is where it gets kind of interesting. Let's come to 2 pi over 3, right? Well, we've been just going to this angle, then this angle, then this angle, then this angle, and we'll come over here. 2 pi over 3 was the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Well, it's negative, right? It's a negative, um, negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. So if we are at 2 pi over 3, and our radius is, uh, if it was positive 1 half, we would go to 1 half. It's negative 1 half, so we'll go back oh, kind of away from that terminal side, the other direction. OK, I think you can see where this is going. The, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. So we're at 3 pi over 4. We're going to come in the negative direction, just shy of 0.75. Remember, that was like 0.71. Um, and then we come to 5 pi over 6. That's going to be a, a cosine of negative root 3 over 2. So we're going to put something like that. And then we come to pi, and the cosine is negative 1. Okay, let's keep going because something interesting will happen here. We'll come to 7 pi over 6. Okay, what's the cosine of 7 pi over 6? Well, it's negative root 3 over 2, just like it is a 5 pi over 6. And that's actually going to repeat this point. And as you come around here, the cosine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Uh, that's where negative root 2 over 2 would be. Come over here to 4 pi over 3. We're going to find uh, that the cosine of that is negative 1 half. We go right there. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And we keep going. Uh, I didn't do the cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. That means we put it right there. Right? So it just keeps plotting these same points over and over and over 
Uh, if we come to 5 pi over 3, now the cosine is positive again, we get positive uh, 1 half, positive root 2 over 2, positive root 3 over 2, and positive 1. So pretty interesting. Uh, and then if we uh, connect all of these with a curve, we find that r equals cosine theta makes a circle. Okay, you can play around with that. If you find a, a, a polar function, r equals some function of, of a theta, you plug in an angle, you get the uh, radius, you, you throw that point on there, you plot a bunch of points, you begin to find the graph. Uh, so r equals sine theta, you're gonna find is a circle that's like up in here. We can modify these functions, but how the functions work is not our full focus right now. Our focus is uh, beyond that, how do we find the derivative, okay? So, um, how do we find the change in y over the change in x? All right, that's what we want to figure out. Um, well, remember that theta is our variable. Right? R is the thing that is the, the output. Theta is the input. So you kind of want to find things in terms of theta, uh, theta and R. Um, let's now try and figure out how we could fi find y and x for any given point on the, the polar. Right? Um, so we could like overlay a normal um, xy plane on top of this and figure out where are these points on an xy scale, right? And remember that this distance right here, oh, right here, right there, that is one away from the, uh, from the origin, okay? So this would be an x of one, this would be a y of one, and this would be an x of, uh, this would be a point one one out here, right? Right there would be one one on the uh, xy plane. So now how are we going to figure out where this point is, what the x and the y of this point are, okay? Um, so let's kind of come over here and draw a picture that's a little easier to tell. Okay, let's choose any random point, okay? It's going to have a theta. It's going to have an r. That's how these polar functions work. So we put in a theta and it tells us the r, all right? So how are we going to figure out what x is and what y is. Well, look at that. Looking for x and y, we just made a right triangle. And we should be able to figure it out uh, from just r and theta. Now, we don't want to go into uh, too much of the opposite over adjacent and all that kind of stuff. Um, or, you know what that may be. Let me think here. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. That'd, that'd be an easy way to get there. Let's uh, figure out what x is, okay? So x is this horizontal. If we take x over r, that's called, you know, let's see Jason over the hypotenuse in reference to this angle here. So that's called the cosine of theta. So x can be expressed as, so let's put it right here, r times the cosine of theta, right? If I take r times the cosine of theta, whatever theta is, I will know what x is. And likewise, y can be found by taking r times the sine of theta. Okay, So that's how we find x and y. All right. So now we start to see, remember that the, the function that, uh, or the, the variable of the function is theta. Right? Give me theta, I can tell you what r is. Right? Theta is what it all depends on. Mm -hmm. It's the independent variable. So let's move this guy down a little bit. So now we can see we can express uh, x and y in terms of theta, really in terms of theta, right? We could write, we could rewrite r, uh, and plug that in here, and have that. So what we can do to find dy over dx is very similar to the parametric where we take dy dt over dx dt, but now we take dy d theta over dx d theta. You can think of the, uh, you know, multiply by the reciprocal of dx d theta, you, and you get dy, d, or dy over dx. Well, what would this take? What is dy d theta? Where here, here is y. The derivative of y with respect to theta just requires the uh, product rule here. So, let's see. 
Well, I'll just write it right here. dy d theta, we're going to use the product rule. So we're going to take, say, r times the, the uh, sine, uh, sorry, times the cosine, r cosine theta. Uh, right, so that's the first part. That's this guy times the derivative of this guy plus uh, the derivative of r with respect to theta, so dr d theta. Right? And that means that we're going to have some parametric or some uh, polar function here that we're going to take the derivative of with respect to theta. That's what that is. Uh, times just the sine of theta. Likewise down here. Right? Now you may th be thinking like, wait a minute, cause if I have a if I have a, a quotient, I'm supposed to be using the quotient rule, right? You might be thinking that, but keep in mind, it's not so much that we want to take the derivative of this. We want to figure out what it, how do we find the change in y. And versus how the, do I find the change in x? Well, I can find the change in y with respect to theta, find the derivative, the, the change in x with respect to theta, and we just have dy d theta over dx d theta. So if you're thinking where's the quotient rule and all this, you don't have to worry about it. Right, we come down here, we're going to find dx d theta, find the derivative of this with respect to theta. So we could just do um, r times the negative sine of theta. So we could put a little negative there. Plus, now we're going to take the derivative of r r d theta times the cosine of theta, and there we go. There's our little formula. Write it however you want. I mean, you, you may see other ones that put the negative second, so maybe it'll be dr d theta times the sine of theta plus r cosine theta over, She's just over dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. All right, so there are, again, the, a reminder of the basics of how a polar function works, how we find the points, then how we translate that into an x and a y, and then how we use those to write uh, the derivative of a polar function. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to post a few videos here from other guys uh, working examples, uh, which should be helpful. But uh, let me know if you have any questions.